he had been um, had, that, that the Conservative Party had made it to Parliament, we would sit down and have a discussion with them to see if they wanted to reconstruct that we were lost. Colin Craig um, instituted a, a weekly prayer session yeah. um, that's compulsory for his staff to attend. We won't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so he didn't brief you on that. Oh, look, it was a, the only discussions I've had with him from memory was when he came to see me about the smacking. And um, it came to because, as I understand, about $400,000 into an advertising campaign about wanting to change that law. I had a discussion with him about why I'd acted the way I'd acted as leader of the opposition and what I thought the application of the law would look like. He actually seemed um, happy with those explanations when I gave them to him. Why have you chosen yeah, to take the assurances from the bank to your chief of staff <coughs> rather than face to face? Well, firstly, my, when, when someone speaks to me, my chief of staff, they speak to me. And with great respect for the previous administration, when they spoke to Heather Simpson, I think they took it that they were speaking to Helen Clark, and God help them if they uh, crossed Heather Simpson. So basically it's the same principle when the person is communicating their view to us. I also accepted Winston Peters at his word, despite what he might say, in February of 2008, when the issue about whether he accepted a donation from Owen Glenn became public, he came back to New Zealand, he held up a sign that said no, and I never questioned him on that. I accepted his word in good faith. It was only six months later, when hard evidence from Owen Glenn came out, that I started saying he needs to reconcile that position. He was then on his way to the Privileges Committee and ultimately the SFO. So, unlike David Shearer, the Greens, and Winston Peters, I didn't jump to conclusions in the first instance. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. You don't think Doc Combs um, claims a hard evidence? No, not in the same way that Owen Glenn was. Doc Combs yeah. claims he's got three witnesses to the conversation of the thank you. I mean, there's the person who answered the phone call, there's, there's the person who was reported in the Dominion, and there's Doc Combs himself. So there's three witnesses versus one, and you, do you think there's no credibility? No, I would have said that's a matter for the police. So, well, I mean, the, the so the question about ethical, ethical conduct that you raised before, in terms of, um, you say that ethical, unethical conduct which takes place prior to becoming a cabinet minister is not in question? Uh, the, well, advice that you that, what, the advice of the cabinet officers in, in terms of ethical behaviour is prior to becoming a minister. It, it's when they hold the warrant, not prior to So we have seen members lose, I mean, leave Parliament altogether as a result yep. of conduct that's taken place well before they became MPs, including both David Samuels and David Garrett. Well, in the case of David Garrett, don't he wasn't subject to the, to the cabinet manual because he wasn't a minister. But he did leave Parliament, which I'd say is a more serious sanction than just leaving ca cabinet. Yep. I mean, are you are you not concerned so that your that are you not concerned that your MPs be seen to be acting in an ethical standard? Well, what I've said to you, and consistently on this topic, is that there's been allegations he broke the local electoral act. I've, through my office, directly asked him that question. He's directly and categorically answered that question 